Hi everyone and welcome back to another Woolen Witch video. I know, how amazing is this? My last video was like two weeks ago and I'm, I'm doing another one. It's not like six months in between a video, this is great. If you've never watched any of my videos before, my name is Steph and I run Woolen Witch which is a small independent yarn dyeing business in Bristol in the UK called Woolen Witch. And I like to do these videos just to give you guys an update on what I've been doing and anything that I've been knitting, what I've been working on, uh, stuff that's going on in my life really. I, I, I want to share it with you guys. I like watching these sort of videos myself so why not show what's going on with me as well. So since my last video not a lot has been happening but there, there has been some stuff. Uh, my job, I'm still not great at my job, I have to be honest. Um, we had a, a little bit of a chat because she's not happy with my progression and I'm not happy with my progression and I'm getting frustrated. She's getting annoyed and frustrated. It's hard. It's not like I'm completely useless at my new job because they, they know I've got experience doing deliveries and delivery driving. Uh, every so often I've been when they've been busy I've been sent out to do a delivery so I'm not learning at the pace that they want me to in the office because I'm out of the office for at least an hour every day so I'm, I'm missing out on bits that I should be learning from. So we've had a chat, stuff is levelled out so I'm hoping this will be the start of me actually getting a bit more confidence and uh, getting on with it a bit. Uh, if you didn't realise I started a new job so I no longer work at Sainsbury's. I now work for a catering company in Bristol. Uh, just as part, just part time. It's about 30 hours a week I do there. Yeah that's what's been happening at my day job. Uh, it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. I feel like I've got a brighter outlook this week than I did the other week. Which is nice. They let me take home one of the vans today because uh, I've got to do a collection on my way to work. Uh, so I feel like I'm trusted now. They've let me have one of the electric vans at home. I feel like that's a step in the right direction, right? Uh, so things that I've been getting on with this week. So I've been filming some tutorials and how-to videos this week on how to knit uh, a pair of socks and also how to use a sock ruler as well. I get a lot of questions I get a lot of questions online but also at shows and things where people have never knitted socks before or they look at the sock ruler and they've got no idea how to use it, why they would even need one. So I figured it'd be really good to have some videos to do so I've been doing those this week so I've knitted half a sock. Uh, that has been pretty much the total of my knitting so far this week not a lot else has been happening. I think I've done two rows on my cardigan. Other than that I've been pretty busy spinning which has been really nice. So I mentioned last time that I've been spinning some John Arbin fibre. Uh, I have now finished it, it's now plied. I set the twist uh, two days ago and I'm really really happy with them so I will, I'm going to show you them. So I've pretty much been collecting up all of my uh, hand spun skeins of yarn in order to twist them all up at the same time so I don't have loads of yarn uh, constantly around the house. I like to build it all up then set the twist all in like one or two days and then take it down and then I've got an empty house then. So some of these have been <laughs> uh, spun on my Bliss spinning wheel and then some of them have been done on my brand new Ashford Kiwi. This one is my first completed one. This was actually hand dyed fibre by me uh, but but in the process of dyeing them um, it felted in my pan. Obviously I couldn't sell it because I'm not going to put you guys through tearing apart bits of fibre to then try and spin it. So what I did was I'd done that myself. So I sat there for ages trying to fluff up some of the felted fibre, pull it apart um, and draft it. It was, it was a very long process but I've managed to get uh, two sort of skeins out of it. It's not it's not enough to do to knit anything with but it's better than it being wasted and just sitting in a box which it had been for a while. So I managed to spin it up. I'm probably going to use it to do some weaving because I've never done weaving before and I figured it's not enough 
to do much else with but I'd really like the colours. I'm gonna have to attempt to dye it again because the colours are really nice. The blues and the brownie greens just really pop and it looks really nice spun. So I'm gonna have to attempt to dye it but not felt it this time. Uh, so that's the first one. So they were spun on my Bliss spinning wheel. Then I grabbed some of my blended fibre just to have a play with when I got my new Ashford Kiwi spinning wheel. So it was more of a sort of experiment to see how the Kiwi spins up and what sort of, um, I guess, settings is the right way to, to put it uh, for me to use uh, for my personal spinning. So this one is spun using my fibre called Ursula and it's just sort of purples and browns and a little, little bit of black and grey. Uh, and it does turn out really nicely, but it sort of works quite well with the green one. Again, it's it was just this tiny little mini skein. Uh, it was just a bit of an experiment. So yeah, it it's not done very well. There's certain parts that have been over twisted, certain parts that are way too loose. But again, I was just having a play and a bit of an experiment. And I think sometimes kind of important to carry on doing you don't want to keep setting yourself borders and barriers all the bloody time because you you just want to where's the fun in that I, I think once I finally got my kiwi and I played with it with my own fiber I then started using some of my John Arben fiber uh, I bought this at their open day the other month, I can't remember when it was, uh, I took my mum along, she's not much of a knitter, she always used to be when I was younger but she hasn't knitted in I think over like 20 years or something. I know she always used to enjoy it but she, I think she just stopped because, I don't know, she had three, <laughs> three daughters to contend with uh, so <laughs> I think she had trouble finding the time and now she's just not got into the, the habit of doing it again. Uh, so I took her down uh, in the hope to try and find something for both of us to enjoy doing together. So I, my mum doesn't really have any hobbies. I've been trying to get her to like read, uh, recently trying to get her to knit again. But she did want to go down to the John Arbin open day with me, which was a nice step, I think. And so I bought myself some fibre whilst we were down there. I know she bought herself a pattern and some yarn, so that's a step forward. Uh, so the, one of the fibres that I saw down there was like perfectly coloured for Ant and I figured I could knit some fingerless gloves for him. He goes through a pair like every year and he, I've never knit him some, he's always bought them uh, and he will wear them for about 8 to 10 months out of the year. Even when it's boiling hot, it, he, he will wear his fingerless gloves and they look tatty and horrible now. So I figured, right, maybe every Christmas I can knit him a new pair. And I saw this fibre and I kind of wanted to make it extra special this year and also do a hand spun. So I've spun it up ready. I've now set the twist and it looks really good. I am quite chuffed with myself. So usually when I spin I don't tend to keep to a weight uh, so I don't tend to keep it stock weight or double knit or anything. I like to do nice big chunky ones so it was a bit of a test for me to try and keep it consistent and uh, at this similar sort of weight. It's chunkier than I wanted it to be but I, I think I still get I'll still be able to knit with it like it's still it was still really consistent throughout all of it it's spun up into a sort of Aran weight and maybe a little bit chunkier but I think I, th I think I should be able to still knit fingerless gloves out of them uh, but yeah so this is the yarn that I managed to do it's a really dark green it's darker in real life than what my camera is doing but um yeah, there's certain parts that have gone a little bit chunkier than I meant it to 
generally that's when my attention span starts going and then I soon stop spinning after then. But actually it's fairly consistent all the way through, I'm, I'm very chuffed with it. Uh, so this fibre, it has a little bit of grip to it, uh, it's a little bit more on the rustic side to what I am used to, so generally I've always spun merino. This one is, I'm going to get my phone out and actually read what it is because uh, I cannot remember. It is the colour Fur Below's. I will leave a link to it in the description below. But it is 50% Exmoor BFL, 30% Devon BFL and 20% Devon Luster breeds. So it's it's all UK based which is really nice and it is very soft like even though it's fairly like rustic it's still got that really nice softness of BFL. Um, so I, I, I don't think and even with his uh, skin conditions is going to have too much of a problem with this. I know his skin is generally even more sensitive than mine but I don't, I honestly I don't think he'll have a problem with this one. Uh, and I did really enjoy spinning it as well so I think I'm going to have to get some more but maybe in a different colour for myself. This isn't the only skein so I had about 200. 300 grams I think I bought. I when I skeined these up and put them around the nitty noddy I did not add enough ties around them which is why they're looking a bit on the loose side I mean there's a random loop there because they when I set the twist and soaked them they all started falling apart that was just me being lazy and I regret it now but I do have an I do have another skein about the same sort of weight um, but that one has completely fallen apart this one I managed to rescue slightly but the other one is just a mess that I'm gonna have to untangle so I think as soon as I finish with these videos I'm gonna be caking these this straight away uh, just to get them done basically. Whilst we were down at the Oprah show I also bought some fibre for myself because if I'm buying stuff for Amp I gotta buy stuff for me too uh, so <laughs> this one I had trouble picking out something for myself there was a lot of pretty colours but I've gone for something fairly muted for me generally uh, but again I've tried to keep it all in the same uh, consistent weight and I've done alright again where my attention span lacks there is the odd chunky part but for the most part I've managed to spin it at a weight that I wanted which was around a sort of sock weight is what I was aiming for because I want to knit myself a pair of socks out of these um, and I managed to get a few uh, bobbins worth out of these uh, so I did actually count the yardage of these ones which is unlike me because generally as soon as it's on the diddy doddy I just want to get it off but this time I counted and I worked it out. So uh, for this one I managed to get 98, uh, just under 99 metres. And then I got a second smaller skein from it. And that one was about 56 and a half metres. So uh, I managed to, to do alright. It's not as long as I wanted it to be. Uh, but... I am pretty chuffed with these. It's nice to get back into regularly spinning again uh, since changing up my wheel. I also managed to get like a tiny little sample skein because I was um, just experimenting with different types of ply uh, rather than your standard ply. Uh, and I've also left this one alive as such so I haven't set the twist in this one so it's I thought it'd be nice to knit up a sample square of of hand spun without setting the twist and then knit up a sample of hand spun with the twist set. I thought that might be a nice little um, extra little blog post I figured so that, I, that was the plan on that one but I'll give you a bit of a close up. I can't remember the name of the colour of this one but I know it's Falklands Merino with silk so it's really nice and soft and it was a really nice 
to spin up as well. I think I spun it in a couple days, applied it within those few days as well. So it's like a, it's turned into a really nice grey blue tones all the way through with the old speck of like white from the silk going through. It's really really nice and it's so soft. Um, I figured I would knit myself some socks in those. I'm gonna see if I can get enough out. If not, I'll be buying some more fibre on the website and just to finish them off because it, I'm really chuffed with them. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned, but I've never actually really knit any garments or anything out of my hand spun. I've knit scarves out of them and like cowls, but I've not done any gloves or socks or jumpers or anything so I, I, I really want to make a go of that. That's the spinning that I've managed to do, that's like the, the craftiest uh, of the items that I've done so far. Not necessarily crafty but creative. We have finally started our Dungeons and Dragons group. I am so happy that we, I've finally found a group of friends that we can all sit down and play this. I have been wanting to play it for so many years uh, but I've never really known anyone that will also want to play it or been confident enough in myself and to be nerdy in myself to ask other people if they also want to play a role playing game. I found, I found a group of friends to do it. So it is uh, me and Ant, my partner, uh, my friend Catherine from university, my friend Nikki from Sainsbury's, and her friend Sam and her partner Mark. Uh, so far we have done one session with all of us and then I've done a very quick session uh, with Catherine and Ant. So I am the Dungeon Master, having only ever played Dungeons & Dragons once before, somehow I've managed to become the Dungeon Master, the Chaos Commander or Coordinator if you will. It is certainly interesting. I am not great with improv so that's been really daunting and I am trying to build up the confidence a little bit more especially because I'm not great at talking in front of people but somehow I've managed to land this role. So originally Ant was supposed to be the dungeon master but me being my control freak self kind of took over and I think he was more than happy just to sit back and become a player. He has played D&D a few more times than anyone else in the group. He used to play a lot when he was a teenager, I think, uh, but he hasn't played it uh, for many, many years. So it's changed editions quite a few times since then. But I, I am an avid fan of Critical Role and Dimension 20. And so I know, the, I sort of know the mechanics enough to get on with it. And the rest of the group have never played before. Uh, so it was pretty much a toss up between me or Ant being the DM uh, and then I quickly started like rolling off into the sunset with all of these ideas and I think Ant was just like, you, you can do it. Um, so I've bought like all of the books, I have got so many files on my computer and on my iPad with ideas and, and plot points and side quest ideas and loot items and, and, and things and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's so much fun and I can't wait to carry on with the sessions. So in session one it was just me, uh, Catherine and Ant which was, we sort of used it as an intro so that I could practice being a dungeon master and getting used to it and knowing what points I needed to work on for the next session. Uh, we done a really quick one shot called Grammy's Country Apple Pie which is just a really nice simple literal one shot like they completed it within a couple hours and it was done. Uh, <laughs> they, they both managed to make friends with some goblins which was kind of cool. So with that adventure you had the option of avoiding combat which they actually managed to which was good. But for the second session, I had Catherine and Ant's characters uh, stumble into the village after completing this adventure and go to the tavern in a homebrew town that I've made. Uh, I've been really 
or I've been so obsessed on doing every detail and building this village and I almost want to start my own D&D blog now because I feel like I have too many ideas to be able to do them with our campaign like I feel like they need to go somewhere <laughs> so I might just start a side blog for D&D &D and just upload random ideas and uh, town information, NPCs and their backstories and motivations and I'm, I've been really enjoying it and my brain has just barreled straight into this but for the second session we had everyone start in this tavern for a festival called Feet Fest and this adventure is based on one called Presto Changeo which is from a book called The Random Encounters uh, in amongst me getting obsessed with DMing and creating stories uh, I've bought loads of books to help inspire me and uh, build battle maps and work out the best way of adding traps and puzzles one of the best series I've so far come across as a newbie uh, has been these series of books called the Game Masters Books of um, and this one was really great uh, it's called the Book of Random Encounters I don't want to give away too much but I highly recommend these books if you're a newbie dungeon master uh, I have been adding tabs to all the pages that I need and then writing notes and uh, creating my own stories and building this town around this one adventure at the moment. I've drawn up a large scale map of the country as a whole and based it on the main world of Dungeons and Dragons so there's there's the town of Waterdeep in case we wanted to run those adventures as well but I've also put in other towns and villages along the way uh, for me to homebrew because I think that's where my real passion and inspiration comes from is making up these places myself uh, maybe having uh, adventures and side quests be inspired from other sources and other resources but for me it's been I've been so excited on writing my own things so that's been like <laughs> like I should be getting on with Wool and Witch stuff but I've become so sidetracked with all this D&D &D stuff I, I've just dived straight in and that's probably why I've been a bit quiet on social media and things is because I've been distracted. I've also started miniature, 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 miniature painting as well uh, for, for our sessions. Uh, we have yet to uh, actually get round to using any of the miniatures that I've painted. So far they've had one act of combat uh, and I had to use a little paper miniature uh, but it's okay because most, most of the guys don't even have their own minis yet. There's only one player at the moment that's gone ahead and 3D printed her character. Uh, everyone else is using little stand-ins uh, and, <laughs> and made essentially made a chess piece on his lathe in the garage the other day. It's a really nice little like metal piece um, but he's just using that at the moment uh, but I think after session two he's realised that he really wants his own character mini as well and it's been really great seeing how excited he is as well. So we started a discord group just so that we can, we can plonk in and upload handouts and things uh, to the guys and they can see them easier on their phone than me having to make loads uh, but it's been it's been interesting seeing and get really excited and post messages and asking people when they can sort out then when he can sort out the next session for everyone and it's not all on me uh, he <laughs> he's been asking me questions uh, I have been giving hints but not full information I've been trying to avoid spoilers for him uh, but yeah it's it's really it's kind of cute seeing him do that uh, <laughs> and I know he's got this weird like friendship relationship with my friend Catherine's character as well now they're like weird ale buddies uh, so far they've decided that Catherine's dwarf character climbs 
ants half orc character like a tree so that she can like fire arrows and stuff and yeah it's it's been really funny it's been great and that has been my main thing for the last couple of weeks uh, well it's been it's been longer than that but our first our like first group session was only two weeks ago um, we have got another one we're trying to book it in for the 15th of October it's kind of nice spacing it out because then I can try to build some of the NPCs further into my head and make them more real life I think that's the bit that I've been worried about is someone asking me a random question and I've got no idea where to go and thinking of things on the spot uh, so sort of nice having the break in between but also I want to play more I want to I want them to get further into the adventure. I want, I want them, I, I want them to experience more of the town like I have. Uh, so I've built all this town, and so far they have seen one location, two locations if you include the market square. But that's it at the moment. I have become so distracted from that. Also, it's really nice because it means that I'm getting a social life back. It means that I get to see my friends and I have an excuse. We have an excuse to hang out now and that is Dungeons and Dragons and I am so pleased by it. But I think that's pretty much it to be honest. There's a few other little bits that I've been looking at in regards to like Wool and Witch but I think to be honest in the last two weeks it's pretty much it. I've just steamrolled straight off into like D and D world, and now my head is going, oh. But you need to add a tailor shop. But what should the tailor's name be? But what, what race should they be? Should they be human? It's gone now, so I'm probably going to end this video and then get my iPad out and just sit there and tap away and build some more stuff into it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is an awkward way to end a video well done stuff but that's what we're gonna go with <laughs> anyway I hope you guys have had a fantastic two weeks since my last video I, I hope to do this every week from now on or at least get used get into doing it at least fortnightly uh, but there's no promises on that because life happens stuff gets in the way and I'm sure everyone understands that <laughs> as best they can so i will see you guys soon thank you very much for watching and have a good day